When you, you talk to people and say, oh, Hull, like I'm telling you where people say about Hull and they go, Hull and put the red down. But I mean, Hull's not a bad place, it's worse of places, I know. It's shit, honestly. Like, sorry about the language, but Hull's horrible. It's not the best place in the world to live. I hate it. And everyone's always got a face like a slapped ass, to be honest. Why? Yeah. I don't know, it's just old. In the papers the... and stuff they say that it's going to be getting better, don't they? But, I mean, if it's true or not, I don't know. Do you believe it? I hope to believe it, you know. For my kids' sake. I mean, businesses are trying to expand and open more. But as well, that opens, like I say, there's another one closing. It bumps everyone out, that they can't get a job, so everyone's on dull, so everyone gets annoyed. I think people are just trying to get over it. They've just got our heads up and trying to get confident again. Do you know who the high steward of Hull is? No, I don't know. No? no. Uh, high steward? Is it you? No. Uh. <laughs> What the high stewards for? Well, he's meant to sort of lead the drive to get people investing in Hull and raise the profile of the place, I think. Yeah, I wish him luck on that one, there. <laughs> From the people of Hull, good luck. <laughs> His first job is to help the city win its bid to be the next UK city of culture. We're getting a tour of Hull's cultural highlights from the new high steward himself. They're so alike. You may know him. You have really changed your image. You have become a very, very attractive man. Oh, you, you know, you're the first person to have said that to me. Perhaps we're not just going to see the transformation of Hull, but the reinvention of the Prince of Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> the city has got to rediscover itself. It's got to reinvent itself. You, you've got the biggest number of people on Job Seekers Allowance here of anywhere in the country. Of course it's bad. But how are you going to turn it round just by sitting around moaning and saying how great the past was and what a rotten luck we've had? That's not the way to do it. Right. The best thing to do is just pretend that that match, that match we just lost 7-0. Pretend that never happened, all right? Let's just draw a line, start looking forwards. You're the marketing manager. You've got that look in your eye. Have I? Thank you. Lind. Okay, right. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Is that a sheriff's badge? Hi, Stuart. Thank you. <laughs> All the time I've been growing up, there's been like the death of... I was born in 75. So the, the fish industry after the Cod Wars was kind of dying and the docks were kind of filled in. But gradually, you know, people are sort of opening cafes and restaurants and they're taking risks. I think they see somebody else doing it and think, we can have a go. There's competition as well. So you've got the whole truck looking across the city and thinking, they packed out the other night. We've got to sort of up our game a little bit. You're a free enterprise man, aren't you, really? At home. Um, with, with caveats, yeah. <laughs> Praising your labour. Good times for a change. See the luck I've had to make a good man turn back. And there's a Civil War connection here, right? This is where it all started. I always think of you as more of a cavalier than a rounder. Is that fair? Oh, let's not jump to conclusions or judgment. Yeah. I'm going to take you into the plotting room now. Okay. <laughs> and so the High Steward lays out his plot for Hull, redeveloping its port and water side, a massive investment in wind energy, and also harnessing the power of culture to bring regeneration. So It would receive a huge lift if Hull became the city of culture. It would be a recognition of everything that is being done, everything, all the changes that are being made, uh, and the creativity that this city is now becoming awash with. It will still happen if we don't become the city of culture, but my God, would it make it all the more worthwhile and wouldn't it help us to market the city and bring about the economic transformation that we want when I talk about e cultural regeneration, right behind us is the deep. Uh, it's the most commercially successful millennium uh, project anywhere in the entire country. It's a submarium. More than three million people come here in the last 10 years. 3,500 different sorts uh, of fish. The deep and the new marina were part of the last wave of regeneration in Hull, which also brought the St. Stephen's Centre a classic retail and leisure project of the new labour years. Some people would argue they try and make a difference, they build things like the St yeah, Stephen's shopping centre over there. It's a waste there. of money, they should put all this stuff into like actual jobs. Like, Are you on yeah. the dole yourself? Yeah, I'm on the How long have you been on the dole? Uh, two years now. And I get paid, what, like £3.68 uh, or something? Not much money to spend in St Stephen's shopping centre on £3.60 an hour, is there really? Has it got anything going for it at all? 
Just music, really. It's just the music and the festivals. This is very good. What's going on in here? <laughs> uh, we've just got a band rehearsing today. You're the Hubbards? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm the sort of Hubbard High Steward of Hull. Do you have a sense of Hull's sort of musical heritage? Beautiful uh, South. Okay. Yeah, Paddington's, Spines. Kingmaker, you heard of it? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful South. Came out of Hull. Mick Ronson. Everything but the girl. We're carrying on a great tradition. It's the old fruit market, and it's turned into like the arts quarter of Hull, really. We're a pop up cafe. Keep away from the cash, keep away from the cash. Great, thank you. Are you on Twitter? Yeah. No, I'm not. And of course, Hull, the only city in Britain to have its own yeah. independent telephone yeah. system. And that's why this city has the fastest broadband. I think you've got to be positive. One good thing about Lord Mandelson's friends leading us into the situation of 2007 was that we wouldn't be stood here now if the economy had survived. This would have been glass, plastic, aluminium, a great development gone on. The economy crashed, plans failed for the area, culture has taken over in this area, this street. It really is a symbol that this is the change of Hull. I've never been down Humber Street. What did you think? What I like about it is the confidence. I thought he got the hit the nail on the head there when he said, you know, in, in the good times, this whole street would have been levelled. <laughs> Do you feel any sort of pang of regret um, looking back that, that, that under the last government there were things like the Pathfinder schemes and that was very much the vision of the It's always an economic, it. commercial argument or an argument to use an area for new housing, new retail. But there are people with competing ideas and sometimes competing interests as well. Um, for me, I would like to conserve as much as possible. I'd yeah, you it. take the Larkin view. What did Larkin say? Before I snuff it, the whole boiling will be bricked in, except for the tourist parts. First slum of Europe, a role it won't be so hard to win with a cast of crooks and tarts. Mm. And that will be England gone. Well, I don't want to turn Britain into the old curiosity oh. shop. On the face of it, there are a strange set of conspirators in this plot. The former Prince of Darkness, a pretty weather-beaten post-industrial city, the first stirrings of urban bohemia, and a poet who is the king of melancholia. It's Pete Mandelson's job to somehow mould all those things together and turn Hull into some kind of new Manchester. He's got to sell that vision to the people who are deciding which place is going to be the UK's next city of culture. But more importantly, he's also got to convince a lot of people here who have every right to be cynical. It's quite a job. There again, this is the man who they say made the Labour Party electable. Oh, no.